I'm Tom Bunn. I'm general counsel for Newhall County Water District. This is Joe Byrne. He's general counsel for Castaic Lake Water Agency. Joe and I are pleased to present to you the settlement agreement that will resolve this litigation. It's the culmination of two years worth of work by the joint ad hoc committee. And I want to use my moment in the sun to thank the members of the ad hoc committee because I personally watched them spend meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting working through some very difficult issues and coming up with uh, some very creative solutions to get past some of the obstacles that we face. So I thank them and um, beginning at the, the settlement agreement on page one, the very first recital, recital A, sets forth the purpose of the agreement. And the purpose of the agreement is to settle litigation by agreeing to seek legislation to create a new water agency. So that's, that's what the, the objective of the document is. Goes through some background facts about Castaic and Newhall and the historic uh, cooperation between those two agencies in general. Then it gets to an instance where we weren't exactly cooperating in recital E, uh, which recites that Castaic purchased the stock of Valencia Water Company, and after that in acquisition, Newhall sued Castaic. Uh, alleging that it was violating its enabling act. That is the lawsuit that we are settling by this agreement. And then it goes through some facts about the, the process and the party's conclusion um, that a single agency will provide benefits to the Valley. Then on the agreements, Again, it talks about seeking legislation to form a new water district. And paragraph 1.1 is what I call the must-have paragraph. Because in order for the, for the lawsuit to be settled, not only must there be legislation, but after it winds its way through the legislative process, the legislation must have the features identified in 1.1. I point out to you the, the kind of long paragraph about the board of directors. That provides that as soon as the agency is formed, uh, all 15 of you will become the board of directors of the new agency. But as your terms expire, that will immediately go down to 12 elected directors and one appointed directors. Those 12, those of you who came to the earlier workshops saw the proposal for districts and election by districts and there'll be three board members from each, I'm sorry, four board members from each of three districts. My dyslex dyslexia kicking in. Um, the functions will include all the functions currently exercised by Newhall and Castaic. The powers will be those of a county water district. Right now, uh, Newhall is a county water district, as you know by its name. Uh, Castaic is a special act agency and as such has the powers that are specified in that legislation. From those two, we've chosen the powers of the county water district, which are quite broad and shared by a number of agencies rather than powers that are unique to this agency that we're going to be forming. And I, I say we're going to be as if, I mean, I understand that you all have to vote on this. So forgive me for, for using the present tense instead of would, but this is subject to your approval. And then we've got provisions, must have provisions regarding legacy indebtedness independent ratepayer advocate and supermajority, which I'll talk about when I get there. The legislation will be introduced 
in the session that started a few days ago and will continue through 2017. Uh, and if it's not, well, that's, that's later on. Th then there are cooperation provisions. And in particular, the ad hoc committee felt it was important. I'm looking at 1.3 now. The ad hoc committee felt that it was important that the two agencies speak with one voice about legislation. We can't have an amendment that's proposed by a legislator that one agency says, yeah, that's great, and the other one says, no, we don't like that. So both of them need to support any legislative amendments, and if they don't both support it, they agree to oppose it and stick with the deal that we've got. Um, 2.1, if the legislation is not enacted in 2017, then the settlement agreement terminates and we're back to where we are today, fussing and fighting. Um, paragraph three, and I think there's been a little confusion when we've talked about retail divisions in these public workshops. So I want to point out that this says that from day one, the district can share expenses, it can share personnel among divisions, it can share equipment and facilities in order to start achieving the economies of scale that we're hoping will come from this combination. But for, from an accounting standpoint, all of those expenses will be allocated to the retail divisions. So there will be, um, retail divisions that, that are the current uh, New Hall and Santa Clarita, and those will keep separate accounting records, and if there are expenses that span both, they'll be allocated. Um, now in paragraph A, it talks about existing indebtedness, and it defines that to include acquisition costs, tax obligations, and debt financing of capital improvement programs, as well as all other uh, bonded in indebtedness and so forth. And that is called in the agreement legacy indebtedness. And this is what Mr. Probalski referred to earlier in the evening as the firewall. That's a, that's a pretty good term because it provides that that legacy indebtedness has to be paid off by the retail division that incurred it. It cannot be given to another one of the retail divisions. Then in paragraph C, we've got two other retail, significant water retailers in the Valley, Valencia Water Company and LA County Water Districts. 36, this agreement is structured so that in the future, either or both of those can be brought into the new district, and I think that's the intent as well. And in each case, that retailer will be responsible for its own legacy indebtedness. Now this this whole thing of retail divisions is, is envisioned as a transition. It's not going to exist forever. Looking into the distant future, we're looking at having just one retailer that serves the whole valley and there'll be interconnected facilities and so forth. And paragraph D there under 3.1 allows that to happen. Number one, the district may dispense with enterprise accounting. What does that mean? Their vote, board of directors votes to get rid of the retail divisions. And they can do that at any time, but the legacy indebtedness has to continue to be allocated to the respective retail divisions until it's paid off. And only 
when all the legacy indebtedness has been retired, can the district dispense with the retail divisions for all purposes? Now, budget and rate setting processes. Um, this sets forth some criteria for a budget process and a rate setting process. The rate setting process in paragraph B uh, includes an independent ratepayer advocate. And it, it gives in general terms what this person is going to do to advise the board and provide information to the public prior to the adoption of new rates. Um, 3.3 contains a supermajority requirement that certain decisions uh, require a four-fifths majority vote of the Board of Directors. And those decisions are listed there. You notice, though, in one of those in paragraph A is uh, supporting legislation to change the Enabling Act. This new district is going to be a special act agency, which means that it's governed by the law that the legislature passed. And that law can be changed. And the new district will not have complete control over how that law is changed. That's up to the legislature. But a four-fifths majority vote is required to uh, support any amendments to the law that change these must-have provisions, these deal points. And then, as I said, there are other matters that require supermajority approval. Uh, 3.4 allows for the elimination of the supermajority requirement. The district can choose by a four-fifths vote of its board at any time to eliminate a four-fifths requirement, any of these four-fifths requirements. But after seven years, um, the district can dispense with the supermajority requirements by just a simple majority vote. And that, by the way, is, is responsive, I think, to one of the written comments that you received today, who uh, said, as I recall, that supermajority is fine, but you ought to get rid of it after a period of time. So this commenter was thinking similarly to the ad hoc committee. Paragraph four is how we're going to settle the litigation. Uh, as soon as this settlement is, agreement is signed, I will, on behalf of New, New Hall County Water District, dismiss the litigation without prejudice. What does that mean? That means that if the legislation is not enacted and the settlement does not go through, New Hall can refile its claim against Castaic and put us back to the status quo. And as a matter of fact, um, we have an agreement between the three parties to the lawsuit that in that case, the statute of limitations will be waived during the, that period of time. Um, that was executed about an hour and a half ago. So um, that's what will happen there. Then we have the typical lawsuit releases. Now, paragraph five, you'll see, is where the redlining comes in. That used to talk about enforcement of the settlement agreement by litigation. As a result of input we received from the boards of directors, the ad hoc committee got back together again yesterday and to discuss that provision and ended up deciding that we'd be better served with a, uh, a paragraph for alternative dispute resolution. And what it provides now is if there's any dispute about the performance of the new district with this agreement, First thing that'll happen is mediation paid for by the district. That will happen if um, three board members of the district request it. 
Now that three will be three out of 15 initially, going to 13 after the first election cycle, going eventually to nine. I didn't mention the nine when I was talking about that, but that's at the discretion of the board. It's expected that that will be reduced to nine over time, but that's whenever the board decides to do that. And that's one of the things that does require a supermajority vote. If the mediation doesn't work, it's submitted to non-binding arbitration, which again, the district will pay the expenses for. The arbitrator will issue a written decision and that'll come back to the board for consideration. All of this before any lawsuit is filed. Paragraph six is the general uh, standard provisions for an agreement. You'll notice the new one down there at the bottom, third party beneficiaries, that was already in the existing paragraph five. So that's, since since that talks about lawsuits, that was moved to a, its own little sentence, but the sentence um, itself was already in the agreement and was not changed. Uh, so that's basically the, the agreement. I think um, before we have any questions, I'd, I'd like to ask Mr. Byrne if he has anything to add. You know, I really don't have anything substantive to Tom's summary. I thought he did a very good job walking through it very carefully. Uh, I guess I would just say that um, we have spent a lot of time together over the last year and a half, and, and I want to thank Tom as well in the spirit of collaboration. Um, I feel that we've worked very well together, uh, and this is our best foot forward, and hopefully uh, I know represents the ad hoc's uh, best foot forward as well. So uh, I would say also that the next step in this, as you know, as outlined in some agreement, would be legislation, um, and this is authorizing us to move forward with that. And, and that, of course, would be a process that would uh, take place over the course of the next year.